Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our morning edition of Big Brother 22 All-Stars Life Eats Boilers. We are now at the final five. The finish line is there, everybody. Can can you feel it? Can you can you feel the excitement? But I, I feel like I'm like a, a fitness trainer. It's the only time I'm ever going to relate myself to anything fitness. I'm like a fitness trainer who's trying to be like, are you guys ready to work out? And everybody's like asleep that you're trying to talk to because it's just like, that's where we are you're with this season. Mat. I... Listen, if this was a different season, maybe I would not have to be the hype mat, which hype mat. Hype uh, okay, mat, see that hype mat. Hype mat. Okay, I am okay <laughs> with that chant more than I am with us having the chant Christmas because remember when that's where we were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still some of us out there so that you would eat a dog treat at the end of this whole thing. But Christmas ain't winning this. We'll talk to you through this video, the new HOH, who the nominees will probably end up being. I've got a lot of questions. Also, Nicole finds just the stupidest things sometimes to be incredibly upset about. We'll go through some of that. Before we dive into it, though, if you guys enjoy this video, subscribe for more updates, give us a like, hit that notification bell. Support us further as well. Check those links to the store as well as our Patreon. Also, thank you to everybody who's been telling us to watch Lovecraft because we're going <laughs> to actually cover it on Sunday. And we'd seen in the comments a lot of people suggesting that show. It is so good. I'm really thankful to everybody who suggested it. I don't know why I waited so long on it. It's great. Thank you. The good news is that there's a lot of time to binge watch it because there's not a lot going on on these feeds a lot of the time. All right. So let's get into it. So... Oh, really? <laughs> no listen, no I drum don't, roll. Listen, I don't get anything right here. So the fact that I called that Nicole was going to win this HOH and she did. But it's the only it's, time that's going to happen all season. Yeah, see, I, I applaud me. you for being correct. But then it's also like Nicole is at a head of household. Yes, Nicole. Well, okay. But, you know, what were the other options? Do we want to watch another Memphis one? Hey, we have we Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Christmas. So Nicole is the HOH. And there's a little bit of complaining that is going on with this. And, you know, some of the things that are happening are she was really upset that she didn't get enough stuff in her basket. And... <laughs> So she went to the storage room, I guess, to get more stuff for her basket or to, you know, like, I, I don't know really what the problem was. I haven't seen her basket yet. So I don't know if her basket was a lot less than everybody else or what was kind of going on there. But she is upset that her basket is not full enough. And then there's also her letter from Victor. There was... It doesn't seem like there was really anything in there that she should be that upset about. But let's keep in mind that this game makes people paranoid. Really paranoid. And she is an influencer outside of this house. There was the stuff that happened with Ian that we think she probably got tipped off about in the diary room. She doesn't know everything that's going on. But she is in a frame of mind that she's reading into either stuff that's not there or you know missing stuff from the letter let's let's talk about this hoh basket first because this this is the part i find the most ridiculous this is the most like it's ridiculous this really feels like this is nicole being her most demanding and her most over the top I, I'll, I'll give you guys a sense as to how some of this works because on Beauty and the Geek, sometimes, we had, like, a whiteboard. If we wanted stuff, we would write it down in there. Yeah. And here's something you learn quickly. Production don't want to listen to your nonsense a lot of the time. Like, I put on there a beard trimmer because I broke my clavicle and I was unable to, like, shave my face properly and it was going to make it easier. You know how much they cared about that? <laughs> they never brought me a beard trimmer. They never even mentioned that they were going to do it. So you have to have an expectation you're not going to get what you want. Nicole, this is your third time. Just be grateful you got something. They could have just given you nothing. They could have just given you something that you don't want. Like maybe they thought that Memphis was going to an HOH. You would have gotten Memphis's stuff. You should be grateful about that too. You're getting paid a lot of money to be on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're at the finish line. There's not that much time left. However, I get it in some other ways, too. This is your first HOH this season. Everybody else has gotten everything during their HOHs, it seems like. So if you've gone through all this and you get to that point, it's almost like 
Davon wins a veto for the first time and her veto is this big. You know, there's a thing about it's cool and it's cute and it's different and that's awesome. But at the same time, you want to have that big veto around your <laughs> neck to be able to swing around in people's faces. This, right? this is going to be a very interesting yeah. if you're ever playing Big Brother. That's right. They're going to be like, Jess has been wandering around swinging this veto in my face and it's Wednesday. That's it happened right. days ago. That's right. The, That's right. That's why I'll never be on well, this show and if I am, I'm going to be the first out. See, this is what's going to happen with me. I was why I can't be on this show. I would be like, where are my four flavors of Mountain Dew in my HOH basket? Okay, so you would be feeling okay, like not, Nicole is feeling. It's out there That would be in my now, head. Guys. I wouldn't <laughs> say it out loud. I might be say it under my breath. But no, okay. so I kind of get where she's coming from with it. Also, yeah, we got to keep in mind, people been in the house a long time. She's extra paranoid. There's been the wall yells. There's been all kinds of stuff that's been going on. So now we're going to get into this letter. Because oh. it seems like in the letter... Victor gave her a lot of love and, you know, misuse type stuff that you are expecting Victor to have in the letter to her and be like, hey, you know, love you, can't wait to see you, like all the kind of love you expect yeah. from your partner. But because he didn't end up saying that he was proud of her or good job or anything like that, she's reading into what is missing from this letter. And again, that isn't on Victor. A lot of that is probably from the paranoia of the wall yellers, uh, production talking to her about the Ian thing, presumably, you know, stuff like that, that she is an influencer. She is worried about her reputation, what she looks like on the show, that she is reading into what is not there and instead of looking at the stuff that is there. I think it's also she's just comparing her letter to other letters because apparently, like, she thought that Cody's letters had been more encouraging and more supportive of his game. And she even talked about Zingbot, that Zingbot gave her one of the worst zings. She's not wrong. It was pretty bad. No, that's, she's not wrong about that. Like, I, I, will, I, will, I will understand the freaking out about the contents of the letter a little bit more. Mostly just... I don't know what kind of conversations Big Brother players have with their potential letter writers after the fact. I would say this, that if I was HOH, I would like communicate with you in advance and be like, okay, if I'm playing a great job, say like Coco is stupendous in the letter or like I, I would, I'm sure they have safeguards in place to keep you from doing this, but yes. I would, I would try to like make some sort of like, I don't know, elaborate national treasure level code for the letter. Yeah, I think that if I was in that position, if I was Nicole or if I was whoever, if I was myself in the house, I would probably just tell whoever's going to be writing me the letter basically what I want to hear. That would, Because I know that this game gets into your head and yeah. it, I know the types of things that I need to hear when I'm in my head because that happens. So it happens to all of us and in the house it happens extra. So I would be like, okay, this is what I need in my letter. You need to kind of hit these points and then that would happen and it would just be a-okay let's get to the nomination side of things because i i don't think this is going to be a shock to anyone out there that it seems like christmas and memphis are going to be the two people nominated for eviction yeah and i mean yeah it's not a surprise christmas is going to be coming after nicole and so is memphis so this this is not a surprise at all and really, this is one of those weeks where the veto matters almost more than anything else. And kind of with that in mind, you can't get cute with this. Like, you can't come up with some elaborate plan or whatever else. Because let's say you were like, okay, I want to put Nicole and Enzo on the block so Memphis may not try as hard in the veto. He's going to try harder, I think, because Memphis can then win it, remove Christmas, and then guess what? Cody has to go on the block alongside Enzo, and one of them is going to be evicted from the game. Yeah, but you want to make sure that Christmas or Memphis are going to go. Yeah. So, I mean, this makes the most sense. She, this is, It was a no-brainer that this is where it will probably go. Let's now, this is not a tinfoil hat moment. This is like no. a thinking cap moment here. Because we, we have to think about this for a moment. Well, we have to put the thinking cap. It needs to be different, so it needs to be like, like this. So like a visor? Yeah, like a visor. The thinking other, visor. That's right. Otherwise, it's like the tinfoil hat. Okay, see... We need, like, a hat rack for all the hats we sort of put on there. Okay, so with the thinking visor on, if you are Nicole, let's say Memphis wins the veto. 
and Christmas is there on the block, and you know you can beat Christmas at the end. Is there any universe? And Nicole, she's won this game. She's smart. Is this the moment where you're like, screw it. I want to get rid of Cody right here. Do I put Cody on the block and get him out? Because Cody, Cody beats Nicole at the end of this. And I don't think it's that close. Yeah, no, Cody beats Nicole at the end of this. The problem is, is Cody is really the only person working with Nicole right now. And she cannot play in this next HOH. So she does not get rid of Cody. That is a terrible move. It's not the time. I mean, she can she can at least get herself to a place that maybe she wins that sort of last HOH and then chooses not to bring Cody and can cut him then. I mean, a lot of people have played this game very safe, but she cut Ian, so she'll cut Cody like uh, she will. It, she'll cry about it and she'll yes. say that she feels terrible about it. Yeah. And that's fine. Everybody feels says that they feel terrible about it, but she will cut Cody. I I do I do agree. There, there is the part of me that just wants to get crazy and have some fun here. No, she but... really shouldn't do that. If she does that, she's in huge trouble. She can't I... play next HOH. She is working with no one else. The thing that I think you Nicole has to remember, and I, I think she should at least think about it because I think you should think about everything in this game, but Nicole, I think, is studying harder than anyone in there. And I, I have seen Enzo study, so for everyone out there that thinks that Enzo isn't doing much, he's just going and he's like, yo, that's it, day 65, this happened, it's, that's not really exactly what he's doing. He's, like, trying to come up with, like, games in his brain yeah. so he'll remember them. He's not full, like, Michael Scott with it yet, where he's yeah. got weird mnemonic devices. Yeah. But I think that she is going to know the days better than anybody else in the game. There's a lot of competitions like that at the end. I think there are opportunities where she could, could take out Cody yep. at Final Four or Final Three. Yeah, she can. And, I mean, we are looking at that position that if Cody goes and Nicole has won, I mean, I don't know what's going to end up happening because Cody really does beat everyone. And the jury, we saw, kind of lukewarm on Enzo. He hasn't done a great job at explaining his game to people no. so that they know what he's playing all the people that know his game are still in the house none of them have made it to jury to tell the jury oh man you guys are actually wrong about this enzo this enzo that there's nobody there doing that i think now the question becomes if you are these master strategists in memphis and christmas well i shouldn't memphis is competent but like these two they know they're going to be in trouble what do they do in this situation? I feel like they're already trying to pull some sort of shenanigans with Enzo where either they convince him to not try that hard or they convince him to win it. And you like, I, they just don't want to end up on the block together because they think that maybe if one of them comes off, they can execute some sort of like magic and they are both safe moving forward. No, I think they both know they're just going up. Like there's no other real choices right now. There's no other real choices right now. It's not a situation where they have like even that much of like social capital in terms of their relationship with yep. the other people. I am curious though to see how Memphis is going to react to being on the block because this man has been very cranky for a guy who's never been on the block this yeah, season. Yeah, no kidding. But <laughs> I mean, really, I'm very curious to see what will end up happening with it because Memphis has won a lot of stuff. I know yeah. he's got a bad foot and he's got a bad back and <laughs> he's, he's got, got a bad, bad attitude. Everything. Yeah, so. You know, it's possible that he doesn't win this, uh, but if he does, what is going to end up happening? It's not going to be Cody. I don't think she can put Cody up because yeah. she needs him. So Enzo will go up, but, you know, what's going to actually end up happening? Yeah, I think Enzo was probably the last second option here just because I think she's probably thinking it's less likely for something crazy to happen if Enzo's up there instead of yeah. Cody, but... You know, really, she's the tiebreaker vote. So she's really the person in control of any craziness or not. Yeah, for sure. Because Cody's not going to get rid of Enzo, so. We all just got to put on. We, oh, wait. I got to take the thinking visor off. We have all to right. put on the hard hats now and prepare for what is going to be probably a pretty predictable week of the game. Yes. It's a good move, though. I mean, it's not. It, it's It's predictable because it makes sense. Yeah, it's. 
It'll be a bad week if they end up getting rid of Christmas at this point because Memphis is so much more dangerous than Christmas is. Let's be real here. Yeah, they need, this is the time. This is the time. It was the time to get rid of Tyler last night is time to get rid of Memphis. They need to. He's won a lot of HOHs. Yeah, he's not that great with the jury, but, you know, he can beat some people. He has to go now. Yeah, if nothing else, he'll go up there in front of the jury and be like, I did this. This is why I did this. I don't care if you like it or not. And maybe there will be people who just appreciate the bluntness and give him votes. Yeah, maybe. All right, we'll wrap this up, but uh, what do you guys think about Nicole's HOH reign? I'm sure there's a lot of, like, party hats on, and everybody is, like, popping this. I know there are Nicole fans. I shouldn't say too much of this. Absolutely. Listen, there are Nicole fans out there. And I do think she's a good player. I just don't find her that fun. But let let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you do like this video, subscribe, give us a like, support us further, check those links to the store, our Patreon, and we'll see you here next time.